Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Zion United Church of Christ in Fireside. I am Brian Niebank. I am our intern pastor here. Uh, and we are very glad that you can be with us this morning, whether you are worshiping with us here in person, on the phone, or online. I'm very glad that uh, you are here to worship with us this morning. Welcome to you, and welcome especially to any guests who are watching us as well. Uh, we're so glad you can all be with us this morning to worship. Uh, a few announcements uh, before we begin our service. Uh, we had our budget and election meeting uh, last week, and uh, it, it went well. We've had a number of ballots come into the church. If you have not sent in your ballot to the church yet, uh, please do so uh, tomorrow or Tuesday so that we can get those ballots and uh, get them counted. Uh, if you do stop by the church and the, there's nobody at the church, uh, just leave them in the, in the mailbox and you'll receive them that way. Also, um, the giving tree uh, in regards to our giving tree, the tags are out, uh, and the Amazon wish list is out. Uh, so this week, uh, you can still stop by and uh, get some tags, uh, or you can just continue to shop on the Amazon wish list. Uh, Susan, I got a text to check the camera, so oh, okay. check, check it and see how it's doing. Uh, but this week is the last week to order and drop off items for the giving tree. Also, uh, we have our Zoom gatherings, which we just started this morning. We had a good group together for our young adult fellowship group uh, on Sundays at 9 a.m. So if you're interested in uh, joining that, I'm sending the link out to uh, the young people of our church and anybody uh, who is young and would like to join in on that connection time. Also, for the entire church community and friends, I have a meeting invite that I've sent out uh, for Monday at 7. Uh, so we'd love to have any of you there to participate and to have fellowship and catch up with each other. As it's well. blurry. That fixes it. I don't know. In addition, we have our communion service. Uh, our outdoor communion service will be next week, uh, December 6th at 11.15 p.m. So if you're at uh, 11.15 a.m., not p.m., uh, our communion service will be at 11.15 a.m. tomorrow, or next week, December 6th, right after our service. So if you're interested in joining us for that, we'd love to see you uh, outside uh, at that time. Uh, lastly, uh, because of the foreseen weather tomorrow, I plan on changing my office hours from tomorrow to Thursday. Uh, if you're planning on coming to the church and expecting me to be there, I'm uh, planning on now coming Thursday instead of tomorrow. Let us begin our service with our prelude music as uh, we prepare our hearts for worship.
let us join together in our call to community. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. Merciful God, you are our light and our hope. Come to us in our worry and distress. Drive away our fear. Come, let us worship God, whose light brings hope to a weary world. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. We'll be lighting our candles. light the candle of hope. Thank you, Jerry. Mm. Twenty-five centuries ago, in a time not much different than our own, when the Israelites had little hope for the future of their country or for their people, the Jewish prophets called to God to come to the people and make things right. They told the people and us that a Messiah would come as a new hope in the midst of suffering. Their prayers were answered with the birth of Jesus, also called Emmanuel, a Hebrew word which means God is with us. Today begins our Advent journey of waiting for the birth of the one who is called the light of the world and the hope of nations. As we light the candle of hope, we give thanks for the prophets of today who dare to speak words of hope for liberation, who say no to the evil in the world, and who call us to overcome our comfortable fears so that we may let go of faulty ways of thinking and of doing, and explore new realms of unimagined visions of how things could be. Let us pray. 
So many in your world, holy God, have lost hope or put their hope in false promises. Sometimes it feels you aren't with us, but are far, far away. We pray that you come into our world again. Be Emmanuel for us so that we may notice where you are already present. Enter our hearts to see in new ways the creative power of hope. Help us to live into your hope so that we may be light shining in the dark places of our world. We pray this in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem and whose return we await. Amen. As we seek the return of Jesus, as we hope for the return of Jesus, let us sing our opening song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. of the tears that we drink, the weight of the burdens that we bear. But God gives us life when we call on God's name. Let us lay our tears and burdens before God. You have promised, O Lord, to forget your anger and remember our sins no more. We confess that we have not always walked in your paths or trusted your promises. We look for security in the wrong places. 
and fail to lean on your mighty, outstretched arm. We are distracted by worries and possessions and do not see the favor of your grace surrounding us. We desire the things that will not last and neglect the abundant gifts of your spirit. Wake us up to your goodness and mercy. Hear us, forgive us, restore us in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 8 reminds us that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. children and the children within this morning. What kinds of things can you make with clay or play-doh? You are the sculptor and you can make whatever you like. Imagine God making us like you make objects with clay. In our Bible lesson today, Isaiah is very upset and is begging God to come down and change the hearts of God's people. We have sinned and turned away from you, and you have become angry with us. How can we be saved? No one calls in your name or pleads for your mercy. You have turned away from us. 